Good morning, how are you? I'm walking a small patch of ground, see the ground? Uh, <laughs> and I'm up in uh, Danbury, Connecticut. I was sizing up rooms for uh, Trump to spend the rest of his days. Actually not, although there is a federal prison up here. Um, uh, Holly has gotten uh, <laughs> stir crazy where we are. So we're taking a trip to Maine, uh, give her a change of scenery and a place where she may not strive to, to work so hard. Uh, she's supposed to be <laughs> recovering, resting a little bit, but it's, it's not always that way. On the way up here, at one gas station, I had one of those nice moments. There was a, another fella at the other station, and uh, a guy came up to him. He was white, He had, uh, and that's relevant. And he was, uh, I think, and he was, uh, he was dressed neat enough, and apparently he needed money. And he talked to this fella who was uh, black and who was nicely dressed, meaning I, I guess he'd be in his 60s or something. He had the, he reminded me of my own grandfather, <laughs> who's long since gone on to his reward. And he had a nice car. And when the fellow walked away, uh, I asked him, I said, did you give him anything? And he said, I did. Then he paused and he said, I was thinking perhaps I should give him more. And I said, you're a good man. He said, really? I said, yes, you have a very good heart. I mean, you don't know for sure that he needs the funds, but you gave him the benefit of the doubt to help another person. And so he gave me a fist bump. And then while I was finishing up putting gas in the car, uh, I saw him do this, make the sign of the cross. And uh, so I... <laughs> I gave, him a, I gave him a peace sign, and he gave one back as I drove away. So it's nice to see people helping others, even when there might be a doubt that they need the help and that they're being taken themselves. He decided it was worth the cost. Okay, so by contrast, what do we have down in Florida? We have a judge whose name is Cannon, who's gradually becoming known as the Loose Cannon, with good cause. And uh, everybody is criticizing her ruling. That is, both to appoint a special master who really has no business looking at this confidential material without knowing anything, because there is no executive privilege, and because she stayed the investigation while this is going on, which is one department, in my opinion, interfering inappropriately with another department, the executive. And isn't it ironic? It's a, executive executive fight and the documents all belong to the executive and she would keep it from them and everybody's you know running their rosaries and trying to think uh, what they could do about it and the justice department really has been i don't know if threatening her is the right word but suggesting they go to the 11th circuit which could take infinity in a day and I've had cases in Florida. Now, in the state court, there's actually a statute that allows you to move to uh, demand that a judge recuse himself or herself. I think that they should make that motion because that's the motion that applies here. It applies because by every standard, what she proposes is a violation of the law and compromises our national security and compromises an investigation she has no business to do. And it appears she's doing it plainly because he appointed her just as he, Trump, had hoped uh, uh, Bennett would do the same thing for him when he appointed her within the shadow of the presidential election. So why don't we do that? I don't know. We just, we just never... We certainly have smart enough lawyers. I mean, the, the papers are very well written. But the, the failure is the assumption that we're on a level playing field, and we're not. And if one moves to have a judge withdraw, the judge normally has to withdraw while a second judge is replaced or considers whether that first judge should have been withdrawn. Now, in the state cases, when you make those motions, and now it's been a few years, but in the state case, when you make those motions, it's automatic. They can't do anything else. What else could we do? I have heard uh, several prosecutors say, so take the case to D.C. I agree with that, but my view is take it to D.C., file a criminal complaint, not an indictment, 
as to the misconduct, him, t him Trump, taking the documents in D.C. Now, a criminal complaint can be superseded by an indictment, and an indictment can be superseded by more details. And you could argue for the limited case that happened in D.C. and leave open where you might indict and how you might indict succeeding upon this prosecution. That's the kind of complicated thinking they should be thinking, and maybe they are, but they're not doing it. And, you know, th this is, this is the, the proverbial knife fight. You should also take Trump's words praising her, the judge, who's giving him what he wants. And the same with uh, the Republicans. But we don't join the issue squarely where it really is. We talk a fiction like this judge is going to be reasonable. And we know she's going to do everything she can, any way she can, to be unreasonable. So those are my thoughts. Uh, I'm going to Owl's Head, Maine. It's beautiful up there. And we brought a couple of pups with us. <laughs> and I took them for a walk. And I have my uh, Hopkins uh, <laughs> regalia on. And here I am surrounded in an alleyway of green. And I'll try to talk to you with more green behind me tomorrow. Bye-bye.